Welcome to the show. Today we will be doing subscriber builds number six. I don't know if you can hear it, but in the background there's an awful lot of wind noise. I've been sort of waiting for a day when I could do the voiceover to this without a lot of interruption from wind. Uh, I live up in the White Mountains of Arizona and it gets really, really windy this time of year. It's apparently just not going to calm down ever. So uh, I will do this with the wind noise. Please forgive that. I'm thinking about building like a, a soundproof booth so that I can just do any voiceover type of stuff inside of that. Uh, if I do that, I might actually do a build on it if there's any interest from, you know, from any of you other content creators. Because I think having a sound booth that you can work in is actually very, very useful. Especially if you have kids or, again, if you live in an area like I do where there's lots of wind or there's other noise to worry about. But anyway, with that aside, we will jump right into the subscriber builds. If you've sent something in the last couple of months, you may have been waiting, wondering when it was going to come up. If it doesn't appear in this video, it will be in next week's subscriber builds video. And uh, from now on, I'm going to be trying to do these um, maybe not necessarily once a week, but maybe a couple times a month to try to stay on top of it because there's been a lot more interest in it. And one of the things that I really want to do, I don't just want this to get to be sort of a quick rundown of a whole bunch of different pictures that a whole bunch of different people sent in. Uh, but I would like to be able to give enough screen time to each person who sends images of their work, uh, give them enough screen time that their work will really be represented and you know, really given a chance to, uh, to inspire others too. And also for those of you who may be running your own business, have your own YouTube channel or, or Instagram or something, you want those things to get mentioned, that gives me plenty of time to promote what you're doing in a way that's probably more likely to get recognized, more likely to be seen by, uh, by the viewers of these videos. So with that, we'll jump right into it. First up today, we have the work of a Marine Corps veteran from Indiana. His name is Seth, and he says he has gotten into knife making as a sort of therapy. And uh, although I'm not a veteran myself, I can definitely relate to that because I've also experienced uh, a certain kind of therapeutic quality to, um, to working, and not just working with your hands, but really crafting something that, um, starting with raw materials and at the end, you've made something beautiful. And he's certainly done that here. Uh, he says the black handled one is uh, stock removal and it's made from 01 tool steel, uh, homemade paper micarta and brass pins. Well, you did a great job all around, but uh, you did a great job on that micarta. That's one thing that I've been thinking about getting into and it looks like you've done fine work here. The large bowie uh, with the caribou antler handle, uh, that's forged from a leaf spring. And he used brass for the guard, the spacer, and the pommel. And then red and black kieranite for the spacer that you see there in the handle and the grip. He does his own leather work too, uh, both crafting the sheath and the tanning. And I really think he's done a great job of matching the leather and the finish on the leather uh, to the style of knife that he's making in both of those cases. Seth has both Facebook and Instagram accounts. I'll probably just post the link up here in the video. I'm still trying to figure out this whole Google policies thing, uh, but I understand that they have some issues with, uh, with off-linking to other websites uh, in, your, uh, in your video descriptions. But you can see I've got that Facebook link right here in the video. And I would say definitely do go check out Seth's Facebook and say hello from Fargo FX. Fantastic work here, Seth. Thank you for sharing your work with us. Thank you again for your service. And as I mentioned, although I have not served myself, I have had plenty of friends and relatives who have. So I hope you'll take it in the right spirit when I say Semper Fi, brother. So next we go to Chuck. He's a 12-year-old blacksmith. And I noticed here that he has an anvil that's either, it's either the same model or at least it's very similar to the one that I'm using. Uh, it does look like he has his a little bit better anchored. I could use a big piece of chain like that for mine to help uh, keep vibrations down. Uh, he also, you know, I noticed this uh, beautiful red vice. This thing is just like bursting with character. Um, I was trying to get a good read on that. I think it says champion on the side. Uh, maybe some of you have knowledge of, uh, have more knowledge than I do about like old school vices and uh, you can weigh in on that, but it definitely, it's definitely making me a little bit jealous because I think that's probably a pretty big step up from the one I got at Harbor Freight, uh, but, a, but a beautiful old vice. And then if you look closely, there's another little anvil there, and I want to say, I guess it could be a jeweler's anvil. It's about that size, maybe a little bigger. Um, just that little gray anvil sitting on top of the, of the red vise there, and uh, that's pretty cool. What I really like looking at this is he has a lot of utility in a very small space. Now, of course, we can't see around uh, to see what else is going on here, 
but um, but I just I really like that very very efficient use of space. I can relate to that because I have a 12 by 12 shed uh, that I have to do all of my work in, and that thing just gets filled up with clutter all over the place. And I'm looking forward to uh, when the weather turns really nice here again. Uh, to being able to move some of my stuff outside, maybe do a little bit of work outside. But anyway, beautiful little setup here, Chuck. Looks like you've got things working for you, and a fantastic job on this railroad spike knife. I am loving that design. Love the twist in that. That is a thick piece of steel, and I bet you had that pretty hot, and it probably still took a lot of leverage and a lot of, a lot of effort to get that thing turned around the way it is. But that looks very, very cool. Nice work you're doing here. If you're doing this work at 12 years old, I can't imagine what you'll be doing at 13, 14, 15. Keep up the awesome work, and thanks for sending these inspiring images. So now we head down to Amarillo, Texas. This work was submitted by a couple of knife makers. It's a father and son team, uh, Neil and Mason, and together they run Malone Knives. He says they've only been making knives for about seven months, but judging by the images he shared, uh, these are some really, really talented guys. Uh, makes me wonder what they did before they started making knives because there's clearly a lot of skill that went into this. So they're using high carbon steels, primarily O1 tool steel, but he says he'd like to get into some other types of steel in the future, uh, but right now the O1 tool steel is the simplest to heat treat, and it sounds like he doesn't want to send off his work to be treated somewhere else. He and his son really like to do all of the work themselves, so they're developing those skills, and I completely respect that. I mean, wanting to be sure that you not only offer your customers something beautiful in a knife, but something that's functional. The blades you see here are absolutely beautiful. If they're heat treated properly, uh, these could be lifelong and even, you know, family heirloom quality knives. So as we go through these images, uh, I'm probably just going to let most of these speak for themselves. Great, great work. Uh, both the crafting of the knives is beautiful and really I think the pictures, the images, and the way these knives are displayed, uh, both are done very, very well. Uh, he's used a variety of materials, a variety of finishes. As you can see, some of these are stonewash finished. Some are made with composite handles and some one of them he mentioned specifically is desert ironwood that's the one with the black and orange g10 liners again i'm going to let most of these speak for themselves uh, but i will call attention to a couple of things he's doing a collaboration with another knife maker on instagram uh, he's finished it up to the point of putting his mark on the blade, and then the maker that he's collaborating with will also place his mark on the, on the finished handles in the sheath. I, I really love that idea of cooperation with other makers. I think sometimes it's easy, uh, especially for creative types, it's easy for us to get, you know, to take this real kind of solid ownership of our work. A lot of that depends on personality, but I just think it's so cool uh, when people continue to build a community around this type of work and really go out of their way to foster that, that sense of cooperation. Sometimes we do compete with each other and sometimes great things can come out of that. But that even as competitors, we can still work together, promote each other's work, respect good work when we see it, and even collaborate directly with other makers. I just, I think that's totally awesome. And it's one of the things that has really kept my interest in this hobby and in this craft. Finally, this last knife here, he says he refers to as the Bare Bones EDC uh, for obvious reasons. Beautiful work on the acid washing, the Kydex sheath. Excellent work on that and excellent work all around. And with that, I'm going to end Subscriber Build 6. Thank you to Malone Knives, to Chuck, and to Seth in Indiana. Really appreciate the work you've done here. Right at the end here, I will include links to pages that those guys have shared with me. And again, if you've sent work and it hasn't been featured yet, thank you for your patience. It will be featured and it'll probably come out in the next week to two weeks. So thanks again to everybody. Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, by all means do. And with that, I'll just say whatever you're doing, wherever you are, have a wonderful day, and we'll see you in the next video.